containers, virtual machines, what's the difference? So in a previous video, we spoke about virtualization, we spoke about the fact that you could have an app called payroll, and an app called accounting, and we can, rather than having them on separate two different pieces of hardware, we could put that in a virtual machine, put that in a virtual machine, have a virtualization layer, and have the one piece of hardware underneath, that's virtualization. A container is, you still have the hardware, you have an operating system, it's called OS, you then have the uh, container uh, engine, and then the containers sit on top. And again, we can still have payroll or accounting or any number of other bits of code that we might want to run. The main difference between a virtual machine and a container is a container doesn't have an operating system. So in this instance, in the virtual machines, the payroll has a virtual as has a operating system, and so does the uh, accounting system. So this might be Microsoft, that might be Linux. They're run as completely independent machines. Whereas in the container environment, we've got our operating system and our virtualization layer, and these um, containers don't have an operating system. The benefit of containers is that you can just spin them up when you need them. Because you haven't got to wait for the operating system to boot, uh, and we all know how long that takes if you've ever restarted your machine or restarted your phone, it's not the quickest process. But a container can spin up as you need that piece of code or as you need that application, and then it can shut down just as quickly. So it's a, a lot more versatile and dynamic than virtual machines. Let's take an example. Let's say we, we're Uber, and we've got our um, ride-sharing app, and you could say that the, um, the process of clicking the button to call a ride, to hail a ride, is a, what we call a microservice. It's a, it's a sort of contained service within the app, and we could run that in a container. So the benefit to Uber is, rather than building this huge infrastructure waiting for people to uh, hail cabs, and it waiting there all the time for them, they can just spin up these containers to run that process when it's needed. It makes it very versatile, very flexible. So the use of containers and microservices has given way to another term called serverless computing. Um, that's whereby rather than going to my cloud provider like Amazon or Microsoft to buy servers to run my um, ride sharing app on, I can just go to the cloud provider and say, I need to run this container, this piece of code, and I want to be able to run it on demand, and I want X million in the next year, and you're going to run it for me. So I'm not buying a server, I'm buying the ability to run that code when I need it uh, and expand it as much as I need. Very, very versatile and dynamic way of running computing. Why does all this matter to IT asset managers? Well, in this instance, we spoke in the previous video, we spoke about the fact that this is hardware and these are two virtual machines, so that is three assets. In a container environment, you've got the piece of hardware underneath. In this instance, we've got two containers. Again, that is three assets. The challenge with containers is that it might only be open for a second and then immediately shut down again. So we need to, again, we need to be able to track what's in that container, what's the risk or the licensing risk or the uh, asset risk within this environment. Luckily, the uh, container environment leaves an audit trail or an exhaust about what's happened, so we can diagnose what's going on. We also need to work with our cloud colleagues to see how this is configured to make sure we're not putting any risk on the business. Oh,